All right, well, we're uh, working on that. Good morning. We've got five more minutes in the morning. Lunch is out there, so I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, I'm Sue Tinwar with the Dean Our Course Resources Division. Uh, I'm the Course Health and Cooperative Program Section Manager, and I'm the pinch hitter for the TIS update today. Um, as some of you know, Greg Norwood has moved up. Um, I think I might have. Um, so I will um, give you a few updates. Uh, I don't have the full perspective of Greg, um, but hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you have. Broke it up into just some updates on the program at a state and national level. I uh, go over some species update and, and with some outreach. And I'm going to try to frame it as you all have with successes, challenges, maybe maybe some unique perspectives. Um, so one of our challenges right now is um, we have lost Greg. Uh, we know where he is. He's <laughs> doing well in part of so college, so um, great for them, bad for us. Uh, so we have an open position, so we're, that's, that's why you have me this morning. Um, but some other perspectives. Um, we've got a new director this year, Dan Eichinger. Um, Dan is uh, came to uh, the DNR uh, second time around. He was with us in Wildlife Division a handful of years ago. I uh, was with Michigan United Conservation Club. Um, he had five priorities, probably four or five, felt me, something like that. I can't remember them all. <laughs> uh, one you can imagine is um, disease. Um, as you know, CWD is a big issue, but also invasive species is one of his top priorities. I got to go uh, see Dan talk in the first few months that he uh, came into the DNR. And in his uh, priority update, he talked about SISMAs. So, you are a household term. Uh, one of the things going on right now with the DNR is we are updating, um, more like reworking, our forest action plan. So, one of the contingencies for federal funding, much like um, the State Wildlife Grants Program with the Wildlife Action Plan. A lot of our federal funding for forest health, forest stewardship, urban community forestry depends on us having an approved forest action plan. So we are working to um, update that, rewrite it. It's a 10-year-old plan. Uh, it was first written 10 years ago, so um, there's a lot that's changed over 10 years. But I want to specifically thank uh, Drew and Vicki. Where's Vicki? Here. There you are. Helping us rework, and Rob's been helping us too. Um, at the stakeholder meetings, um, really tweak um, a lot of our strategies and actions for forest health. Uh, so that you all get an opportunity to review that in a draft form uh, coming out this winter. Our deadline is June. Um, so this will help also. Um, be another tool that people can refer to uh, for getting uh, grants. This makes you eligible for uh, landscape scale restoration grants and such. Um, the other update I wanted to say from the state is we just started a SISMA work group. So this is to kind of help align um, and really um, uh, specifically um, uh, spell out the state's priorities um, to make uh, your impact even greater within the state. So it's not to duplicate anything here at Michigan Based Species <coughs> Coalition, but this is the group that helps on the internal side. Um, Christina Boggers on it, Sarah Lesage, Ryan Wheeler, um, and we also have a rep from MGARD. Um, you'll be meeting our new folks here in a couple minutes. Um, so we're going to be working on um, new priorities. So when we set up the Michigan Basis Species Program with the funding that came in <coughs> five years ago, um, our goal was to fill the state with SISMAs. Um, so we met that goal. So what's our next goal going to be? And how do we maintain this momentum? How do we build on our success? These are some of the things we're going to be talk, uh, talking about. Hopefully uh, um, helping um, SISMAs as well grow and expand. Um, build on their impact. At the federal level, there are some new opportunities with the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. So the Forest Service has expanded opportunities to work on forest pests. 
um, with GLRI funding. Um, Michigan was successful in a, a few of the applications this year. <coughs> Um, and then also, we finally are starting to see the revenue come in from the Good Neighbor Authority. So uh, about five years ago, the Forest Resources Division entered into um, agreements with the three national forests in Michigan, Ottawa, Hiawatha, and Huron, Manistee. This is to help um, harvest timber on national forest land, and all that revenue then comes to the state. We get to spend it, but they get to tell us what to spend it on. So um, right now we are just starting to roll out uh, some of their projects. Uh, Rich Corner is going to talk about that a little bit this afternoon. Um, but we do have some good neighbor authority funding going for invasive species from the Huron and the state. So, um, and more money is going to be coming in. The acres are going up, so lots of opportunity there. Um, I'm not an expert on this one, but we have an expert in the room for recovering America's Wildlife Act. Probably half if of anybody your... wants to talk about it, I am happy to talk about it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so she is the expert, Amy Grosier. Uh, Rawa is um, the acronym. So uh, being introduced, hopefully it's gonna passed. Pass. It's passed through the House Committee on the Natural Resources in um, the, re the representative side. So it's moving through Congress slowly. Needs more support. And this funding, that's <coughs> right. Yeah, sorry, I just want to say um, you will continue to get the updates on that legislation and direct from Dan Kennedy, who's kind of our uh, perfect point person at the Wildlife Division. So you'll keep getting those emails. I'm just going to pass everything that he sends to me to you, so you'll be uh, up to date on that. Anyway. Um, and that funding is to implement state wildlife action plans, invasive species, um, as mentioned throughout that plan. Um, if you don't know that plan, please read that plan. This would um, bring in something like $27 million into the state, um, and a lot of that will go out the door in grants. So um, this would be something to benefit all of us, but especially our teeny species. Um, I think we get a lot of questions on state land, land management. I just wanted to kind of review, re review with you how uh, DNR manages our land, um, where you can find more information, um, just give you a kind of a little bit of perspective. So with um, state forests, we have about 3.6 million acres, mostly in the northern lower in the UP. Um, we break that up into 15 management units in the northern lower in the UP. Um, these are co-managed with Wildlife Division. So all the decisions we make on uh, every piece of forest land is, is made uh, with foresters as well as biologists. Uh, stepping down from there, we've got state game areas, mostly uh, found in southern Michigan. Um, but uh, Wildlife Division has 30 biologists spread across the state. Obviously the ones in the north spend more time on state forest land. Um, state game areas are solely managed by Wildlife Division. And then finally, state parks, and these are general acres. Don't, don't hold me to them. State parks manage about 200,000 acres, but they manage um, really key is our campgrounds, our boat launches, <coughs> and trails. Um, all of that is managed solely by Parks Division. However, we do have recreation <coughs> areas that are co managed by Parks and Wildlife Division. So, if you want to work on any state property, you need to go to the division that owns or manages that property first. So, Chris, luckily, Christina and Ryan are situated in these divisions. They can get you to the right people. I can certainly help you. Um, there's lots of plans out there. Right now, we're going through regional state forest management plans. So we're going to have new plans going forward for all of our management units. There are game. Uh, game area plans, uh, state parks, each state park has a master plan. So a lot of that uh, does integrate what the goals of that property is for. Um, and you can find more information about how invasive species are addressed through some of those plans. So I'm going to switch to species. So everybody know we had a win this year with 
ALB, Asian Long Harm Beetle, in New York, finally after 23 years. What were you doing 23 years ago? Do you ever feel like you're never going to end uh, with certain species? Yeah, these people stuck it out for 23 years and finally eradicated that pest. We still have it in North America, um, but uh, that, that's a big win. Um, one, I guess, more challenge that we have coming right now is a beech leaf disease. So just coming off of our real high about restoring uh, beech after beech bark disease, along comes beech leaf disease. Um, and this is found in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Ontario, um, and even uh, <laughs> more complicated is all of our beech um, that we're able to put back out um, in the state came from Ohio. So we are now working <coughs> on how to make sure that any of our uh, beech bark resistance trees, uh, we can avoid bringing in the, uh, the nematode for beech leaf disease. Uh, looks like it's spreading pretty fast, pretty damaging. Um, any beech that are left um, will likely succumb uh, to this. A lot of research being done, so um, some to be on the lookout. It is literally in Ohio and Ontario, so <clears throat> southeast Michigan is likely where we're going to find it first. Um, success. Um, Hemlock Willi Delgit. We have no new infestations found outside the four counties. Um, we have about uh, 6,000 acres that are infested and uh, through the work of the West Michigan SISMA and parks, um, they've treated over 43,000 trees. So, um, pretty good, pretty good response to uh, trying to nail the sucker. I also want to thank all the SISMAs for stepping up to do HWA surveys. Something to be fun in the winter. <laughs> Why not? And then we have winters like this. But something to help you know warm you is that you know when we get these really 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 cold winters, is we're nailing the snot out of these suckers. Um, winter mortality um, is really high when we get those really 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 cold cold days. So hoping for another polar vortex this year. Uh, we hosted the HWA managers meeting as well, um, so all the states from the east who have been dealing with this for a number of years came to Michigan. Um, we shared a lot of information, uh, got some uh, good techniques, uh, they solicited a lot of advice on how we're doing things, so that was really helpful. Um, Oak wilt, I guess that's more of a challenge. We are seeing it expand in the UP. We've got new detections in Dickinson and Iron counties, so um, we still see it um, continuing to spread in, in the lower counties as well. Uh, we've been dealing with House Bill 4827, uh, which is a pretty poorly written legislation in an attempt to deal with Oak Will. Um, so a lot of stakeholders are getting together with the representative to try to turn that into something positive. Um, next one, um, making progress there. The estimated population for 2019 is just under 8,000 birds. Southeast Michigan, just over 2,500 birds. Um, and it's in a decline, so it's, we're looking at a 48% below the five-year average from 09 to 13, um, and that's before the initiation of the expanded control efforts. Um, we're here in lower courts of feral swine, only a few hunters, hunters this year uh, reported seeing them. We ask every hunter that comes into the check station if they've seen any feral swine. Um, all reports are responded to um, by USDA Wildlife Services, so um, I think success on that front. Uh, basic plant, we got some more uh, successes and challenges. So, so we've got swallowwort biocontrol on its way. So the um, control agent has been able to get um, two generations. We also have been reported damage on swallowwort. So hoping to see that um, <coughs> become something we can put in the toolbox to keep your fingers crossed. Uh, this summer I was getting ready for work and um, I don't know if anybody's married has the same 
spouse deafness that um, I have in the morning. Um, but as I'm walking out the door, I hear this mumbling of Japanese stonecrafts. And I was like, what? He, Burns, looking up online, did, why are you looking that up? He's like, well, Amy just sent me these pictures, and I think it's Japanese stilt grass. And um, sure enough, it was. Um, she's an Ada, um, and a new population found uh, this summer. So you never know where reports can come, and I always remind myself, keep my ears open. Um, but we do have that in just a few locations, quite right, widespread in southeast Michigan. Um, hopefully we can continue to contain it, um, get some success with some of the treatments. I think another challenge we have is tree heaven. I don't think we've given really good, clear guidance on how we're going to deal with tree of heaven, especially in light of spotted lanternfly. Um, do we just kill them all? Um, do we save some for uh, what they're doing in uh, some of the um, areas that are festive, using them for trap trees? Uh, we'll let you know. Now we've got folks at full strength at under. Uh, we're working on a plan this year. We will have guidance for you as to what we're going to recommend. Uh, finally, just uh, go over a little bit of outreach. Um, I think this is still a challenge for us. Uh, we don't have a cabin. Um, as you can see, we have uh, less terrestrial and base species outreach materials. We are trying to turn that a little bit around. Uh, actually got uh, unluckily Delgid ID cards uh, made up and out the door. But um, we continue with our campaigns on don't move firewood, uh, buy local, burn local. We're still doing um, only heat treated firewood for sale at uh, state parks. Um, also got a new uh, funding for additional boot brushes through uh, Play Clean Go. And then finally, um, you guys are all in the MISGP story map now. So you are out there for the public to see all your projects and stories and pictures. Um, it, I want to thank Cami for really leading um, that uh, project. It's a lot of uh, wrangling cats to get that done, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see yourself and all the hard work you've been doing. Thanks.